Welcome to the F-35 update for the third quarter. We've seen some significant events recently. A highly successful visit from Secretary of Defense Dr. Robert Gates. The first Stovall aircraft, BF-1, preparing to ferry to Patuxent River and continue its build-up to the first vertical landing. And the factory rollout of the first carrier variant, CF-1. While milestones are being accomplished in every area of the program, the global supply chain also continues to mature and develop, anticipating the future production rate requirements. The international partnership continues to be very strong. In the United Kingdom, they're facing a decision this year to buy their third Stovall test airplane. The Dutch are facing a similar decision to buy their second CETOL test airplane. In Italy, we have a team working with Alenia to put in the first final assembly and checkout facility outside of Fort Worth. There's another exciting new chapter of the program about to unfold, and that's the addition of additional countries beyond the basic partnership. We're actively in discussions with the JPO and U.S. government with a number of other countries today. Now, these partnerships are increasingly important as the program transitions toward full rate production and support of operational capability. <laughs> The third quarter of 2009 produced milestones across the F-35 Lightning II program, particularly internationally, where key F-35 suppliers are gearing up to deliver production parts and hardware as the program moves from development toward full-rate production. The F-35 is a true global partnership program, with a significant portion of the content of the aircraft coming from Europe. During this quarter, three international suppliers Kongsberg Defense Systems in Norway, Terma in Denmark, and Stork Fokker in the Netherlands successfully completed production readiness reviews in preparation for production and deliveries. At Kongsberg Defense Systems, a new 30,000 square meter facility for the manufacturing of advanced composite aerostructures was opened in November of 2008. The opening coincided with the Norwegian government's decision to pick the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter to replace the F-16. Kongsberg is Norway's premier supplier of defense and aerospace related systems and in July was selected by Northrop Grumman as a strategic partner to produce fifth generation composite components for the F-35 program. The new carbon fiber components that Kongsberg will produce are highly complex and require close tolerance fabrication to meet the performance requirements of the F-35 aircraft. The company's initial deliveries will support Lot 3 low-rate initial production aircraft, which will begin the program's transition to full-rate production. At the F-35 final assembly plant in Fort Worth, Texas, changes are underway to support the transition of the F-35 program to full-rate production. To prepare for this evolution, there will be significant construction activity in the factory over the next several years. The transition will occur in three phases, wing, forward fuselage, and mate and final assembly. Changes in the factory haven't impeded progress on the program. On July 28th, a ceremony at the Fort Worth plant marked the rollout of the U.S. Navy's first ever stealth fighter, the F-35C carrier variant. The aircraft will enable the Navy to possess fifth generation fighter capabilities at sea extending combat reach and reducing the timeline from threat to response. In August, the flight test program continued to achieve success. A short takeoff vertical landing variant of the F-35 became the first F-35 to complete an aerial refueling test using the Navy and Marine Corps style probe and drogue refueling system. The successful mission was the first in a short series of tests that cleared the Stovall F-35B test aircraft for extended range flights, particularly to their primary test site at Naval Air Station Patuxent River, Maryland. The F-35 program is on the cusp of a tremendous expansion in flight test as a large number of new aircraft enter the test fleet this year and early next year.
A testament to the accomplishments of the program was the August 31st visit by U.S. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates. Dr. Gates got a close-up look at the F-35 assembly line and conveyed optimism for the program's future, emphasizing the F-35's importance to global security. I'm heartened uh, by what I've seen here this morning. Uh, I was very impressed by the investments that have been made in the production line, in the robotics and automation. We cannot afford as a nation not to have this airplane. The F-35 program remains focused on preparations for opening the Integrated Training Center at Eglin Air Force Base, Florida in 2010, a facility that will train F-35 pilots and maintainers worldwide. The Eglin Integrated Training Center will turn out pilots and maintainers who are fully mission qualified. The center will feature a full mission simulator that will be networked to other trainers on site, enabling formation flying and virtual wargaming. F-35 deliveries to Eglin Air Force Base begin in 2010, with initial operational capability, or IOC, scheduled for the U.S. Marines in 2012, the U.S. Air Force in 2013, and the U.S. Navy in 2014. Thank you for watching this quarter's F-35 team update. This video and the latest F-35 program news can also be found at LockheedMartin.com.